Hey everybody, it's Messy. Welcome back. Sorry for the camera movement. <laughs> um, but today we will be following a Generani tutorial on roses. So I've got it in my brain. I have already watched it one time. Uh, I don't know which side the paper is meant to be. Okay, this side has more texture. So I'm guessing that we're going to use it on this side. Okay. And we're just going to use this... Um, size 8 mica door for artists because she used a size six, 12 16 or 66 um, and also a size 6 but she used um, a 4 sized paper but I'm only using a5 because I just kind of perforate a slightly smaller size over bigger but I am gonna go ahead and take down my paper. So last time I did watercolor, I used masking tape and there was a bit of an issue because masking tape is really sticky and you know, that's a good thing because you want masking tape and you know, sticky tape to be sticky because that's what the point of it is. But it was just too sticky for the purpose I was using it for, which is art and just holding down my paper to my desk. So that is why I'm going to be using washi tape. And this is the washi tape that I like to use uh, for watercolor. Just because I like the pattern of it. <laughs> what can I say? Alright, so Jenna uses some colours that I might not have yet, or that I haven't acquired yet. So I'll just use what I have that is closest to the colours that she's using. So I'm using my Cotman Watercolours um, by Winsor & Newton, um, as usual. <laughs> and I am also going to be using a ceramic plate because I just feel like sometimes I don't have enough mixing space and this will be just great help. So getting all of my things together, we can start. So I scraped as much as I could off it and now we're just gonna kind of mix it to dissolve the big chunks of it. I have to get some better wording, don't I? Yeah, I do. Um, oops, you probably shouldn't flick that. got a nice green colour mixed up and uh, we're not going to be using this green colour, are we? No, we are. <laughs> just a little bit later. I'm just going to try to scrape off that pigment by putting water onto my brush and then rubbing it off against the sides because I want to preserve as much as possible. My handy paper towel right here acquired with me so I can clean and dab my brush when I need to. Okay, but we have to make our rose color. So for our rose color, I think I'm gonna put some cad red here. She used scarlet lake and I think opera rose and a bit, a, a very small amount of Mars black, but I do not have any of those colors. I know, I know, I know. But, um, so we want to start dark in the center. So I'm just going to pick up some put here and then we can darken that up. Maybe add a bit more alizarin crimson, some uh, purple lake, and maybe a teeny little bit of ivory black. That looks like a nice wine red. So I'm pretty happy with the colors that we have. I'm just gonna pick up the rest of my brush and mix it in here, just so the colors look more conjoined. Again, keeping that pigment on, preserving as much as I can. Uh, and then, washing out my brush. Well, that was clever. 
Alrighty, let's start. Ugh, I'm so nervous. Why? I honestly don't know. But I won't use answer. <laughs> Alrighty. <clears throat> let's do this. Dressing our way, our way, our way, our way our darker color. I'm actually gonna add just a touch more. Uh, what do you call it again? What's that color again that everyone uses? French. Oh, I just ultramarine. I'm not using French ultramarine. This is just ultramarine. It's not called just ultramarine. It's just the name is ultramarine. Yeah. So this is a bit more red. I need to make this a bit more red. So I'm gonna add some cadmium red. I got our nice wine color back. Touch more ultramarine. And we're good to go. Let's start over here. We're gonna do little C curves. This isn't as dark and pigmented as I would like it to be. Just going around making sure that we make all of the petals uh, bigger and lighter when we get further out. So because my thing is glued down, not glued down, but you know it's just taped down and I can't move it, you have to move your own wrist, I guess. Bring out that brighter color that we had. And just add it to the outer bits. Maybe make a little bit of mix. I know it's very hard to see, but it is there, and when it dries, it shall be more visible. Alrighty, so we have our first loose rose. And uh, yeah, I think we can add one more over here. So just so there's like some difference, I'm gonna make this rose a bit more alizarin crimson-esque and add some more of that. And here we go. Remember starting loose. Kind of just telling myself, I'm not saying you guys are doing it wrong. Or if you do do this, then you're doing it wrong. I'm just trying to correct myself by talking out loud. So in the center, we want to make sure that they're all clumped together. And pretty close together. Um, but as we go out, they will be more far apart. And as always, I will link the original video to the description. And I'm just, because we added more crimson, I'm gonna make this lighter color even more light and make it more orangish. Just slightly, kind of give it a bit more of an orangey tint. I feel like this is too orange. I'm not a fan of this. So you see, this is going to create a hard edge, so I'm just going to quickly brush that up. I'm going to try to lighten up these edges a bit more the outer petals with a dry brush. 
thirsty brush. Alright, um, I think I can go in with the leaves now. So let's do the leaves. Um, we have our hookers green here. I guess we can, I've also got some of this brighter yellow green kind of thing in my palette. It's a bit more of a Petrus Poise color, but it's pretty cool. Okay, so I think we've got some colors down for the leaves. Uh, let's just start. So I'm going on with the hookers green first. I want these to be nice and pigmented. Okay, just for funsies, I think I'm just gonna very lightly get this color. And wash it out a lot. Just like that. So we have a very light green. I'm just gonna kind of, which I'm not as light as I ex it's actually darker than I wanted. So I think I'm going to kind of just, just dab it in. Just very light so it distracts from that bright green, green, her uh, bright white that is the paper. I just don't want the leaves to bleed in a strange way. Maybe some areas a bit darker than others. 
because there might be some different coloured leaves in the background. Alrighty, I think we're pretty much done here. Alrighty, so I do apologize that the lighting was a bit weird earlier on um, and sometimes it would flicker and stuff. So I have tried to move around my situation just so it's a bit more handy uh, and it won't flicker as much. So I have, this is day two. I've got, I've got another little water tub um, and another one just for backup. So the, our current water tub, I'm gonna use this for, for like the rose colors, um, you know, the red tones, uh, the, the warmer colors. And I'm gonna use this one for the cooler ones, whereas it's gonna be the leaf. So I've scraped off a bit more of our hookers green and put it here. So, uh, yeah, where is my other brush? Oh yeah, speaking of other brushes, uh, just for funsies, I might just pop in a couple other brushes that I own. Uh, it's got one of these. Uh, wait, this is the one that I'm already using. <laughs> Sorry. First up, we got this very long size six filbert by Princeton. It's the Snap series. Really long, biggest filbert I own. I'm not gonna use that quick secret this is a goat head that i got for a dollar so huge bargain i really love this brush really nice it's by j burrows and this is a princeton round which we could use for some details later on it's size two by the way so as you can see i may have possibly done a little bit <laughs> um and yeah i'm just gonna go in and change some of the hues in here, so I'm just gonna add maybe a bit of pur more purple weight. Um, also, got some dioxide purple that is a bit more of a stronger purple, but it is more of a bluey purple, whereas that one is very much more red. Getting some of this, maybe darkening up uh, the inside. It's still pretty watered out, so it's gonna be very layered, and I quite like how layered it looks. It's um, and yeah, we can just keep building onto that. Blue color is all about layering. That's why it's transparent. So you can do tons and tons of layering. What did I just do? Okay, maybe adding a little bit more shading onto the leaf. As you can see, I've got a hard edge, but honestly, I don't mind hard edges. Um, you know, sometimes ones like this and ones that are kind of feathering or something like that, it does get annoying, but when it's just like this and it's not really blended, I actually don't mind it. It makes me feel like it's more watercolor because I just feel like it's, it just screams I'm layered right to my face. And that's what I really like about watercolor. And I always have this trouble where I'm just using watercolor and it doesn't really look like watercolor. I mean, it doesn't look like acrylic or oil. You would be able to say, if someone asked you, hey, what paints did I use? It'll be like, oh, so if you can do this and this and this with acrylic and oil, that must be watercolor. It doesn't just scream watercolor in your face. That's a problem I've been having and something that I've always wanted to improve a bit more on. So doing this just helps me make that shout out to you. And I like that. Maybe scoop up a little bit more Viridian. By the way, um, Jenna uses the Professional series. This is the Cotman watercolor, so this is a bit more of a lower grade, which is student. But I feel like the I personally feel like these perform perfectly fine. Like, obviously, the professionals are going to be a bit better, but 
it's nothing that I'm completely desperate for. And the shading is making zero sense. <laughs> Everyone says to use um, two jars of water, and I do believe that's good, but I use three. One to wash out cool colours, one to wash out warm colours, and another to get clean water from. So that's my personal preference, although I may not always do it. Um, that's what I do like and try to do more often. So I'm going to do a bit of splatters because I thought that would look pretty cute. I'm just going to absorb some paint. This dark blood wine red. This is a, a very low quality brush, obviously it's synthetic and you can just see that's not absorbing too much. I mean, it was like 45 cents. If you do the math, um, I paid just over $10 for 25, uh, 25 set, including some palette knives. That totals up to about 45 cents each. But you know, it performs fine. I actually kind of love that. I'm gonna add a bit more of a purple one. And last one, a bit more of a cad red. So I'm going to water this out a bit more. I love that. That's really cute. I've never really done a slide technique like this. I just see everyone saying that you can do it like this. And I'm like, wow, huh? Because I've always just gone like this and I end up flicking paint all over my wall like I just did demonstrating this. So I just go like that. Going like this is way easier. Recommend it. And I went to my eye. Delightful! <laughs> Just how I like it. <laughs> so as you can see, I did torn down the paper just by adding a couple very soft dabs. Um, there's no bright, white, shining paper looking at you. I mean, obviously, it does look a bit brighter because everything else is a bit more deep. But it is actually not white. If I pull out my white paper towel right next to it, you can see that this is far brighter. So, yeah. I think I'm pretty much done at this point. Um, I just want to add a bit more depth uh, to the, the inside of the flower. So I'm going to get... Oh, that is pigmented. I'm blown away by your beauty. I'm going to add a bit more to the center. Going in was just pretty much straight. I did mix a bit more of a cad, uh, cad red, but uh, I don't want it to get too hectic or it looks like a blob, which is kind of what I did, and I kind of regret it, but I'm trying to be professional here, okay? <laughs> okay, getting that dark red again, I'm going to add a bit more Eliz, Eliz Liz, some burnt umber, a bit too red, uh, maybe a bit ultra. Oh, that's better. And more loose. Oh, yeah. See how that we're really able to darken it up? Actually, let's use our final brush for this. Obviously, you can complete all of these things with just one brush, but I find it a bit more fun and pro um, by using OS. Actually, I feel pro using one and two. Uh, or multiple because professional I keep only so many whatever <laughs> but I also feel a bit more professional because it's saying you know I can accomplish some good art with only one brush unless it's not good which I highly doubt because I know that all of you guys will create great art and I need to water this out a bit more all right so I'm pretty happy uh overall with how this came out uh I actually really love the purple splashes I think it just Add some bit of a confusion, and that's what I'm all about. I'm very confusing. Um, and you know, I think it's just really cute. Oops, don't get carried away, guys, or this will happen. So, I like to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed this, and um. <clears throat> see you guys running with the foxes remember original 
video link in the description. And uh, have a great day. What kind of in outro is that? I do my outro, then I keep babbling on. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay. I'll see you guys when the boxes. I'll see you guys running with the foxes for the last time. Bye. See, now we're on, t on doing the tape. And we've got a nice crisp, no, crisp, <laughs> crisp white border in it. And now I just stand my point that the white of the paper is way brighter than the light green. Okay? I stand my point. <laughs> so, let's. <laughs> Let's finish um, doing the tape. Very satisfying, uh, for sure. And um, yeah, I hope you like the finished result. I asked my mom whether she liked it and she did come check on it um, before all the lighting got all annoying. Um, and she said she liked that one better. So let me know which one you prefer before or after. Bye.